Hello. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Sweeta. How do I pronounce your name? Sweeta. Sweeta. Where Where are you at the moment? I mm -hmm. saw something on LinkedIn that you're in the San San Jose. Uh yeah, I'm in yeah, uh, closer to San Francisco. Okay, so thinking of the timing, I think it's a funny time for it. It's going to yeah, be the very late or early. It's like almost 9 p.m. here, so it's not too bad compared to the other. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Where are you looking? So we got, oh, I'm in Singapore. Oh, wow. okay. Singapore, yeah. I used to live in Singapore. Yeah, I saw that you went to NUS. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've done my research. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just a couple of things. I just saw the Excel sheet that uh, Uri shared with mm. me on the questions. Okay. Some of these are like totally unrelated to the topic. So if we can start with the ones that uh, I sent you, Jonathan, that would be uh, great. Sure, sure. I've been I've been through uh, the the questions already, so I've highlighted about four four of them. So oh, did you send it to me? Sorry, did I miss you? No, no, no. I'm just I'm just saying uh, from from the oh, list okay. of, um, of questions that people submitted, I've been through it and I found okay. about four questions which might be relevant. You have to trust me on that. Sure. Yes. We'll just take a look at the timings. Okay, we're almost at a timing. Uh, welcome to. Did you have any slides to present? Um, no, uh, I didn't do it in the last okay. table, so I thought I'll just keep it. It's fine, yeah. Same way. So we also see that um, there's a whole range of people who contributed questions, uh, from directors to solution architects, developers, VPs of engineering, co-founders, product managers, consultants, and tech leads. That's like a good important tech lead. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see. So we've got about 25 minutes. So I, I think we should get started now. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I've only got a few people here, so uh, more will hopefully join. Um, so I'd just like to introduce this session, uh, just to make sure everybody's <laughs> in the right place. We'll soon find out how, how it goes. So this is solving challenges in the API test in API testing to achieve agile development, right? So I think two things there. So APIs are central nervous system that binds your core platform to different channels like mobile apps and websites, and indeed the rest of the world. <clears throat> so in particular, as enterprises expand their digital footprint, they have to ensure the API behavior is intact. It's got far reaching impact because so many people are gonna be using it both customers, partners, and so forth. And also it's far reaching because the process is now faster with DevOps and agile development. And the first step towards achieving quality is to start testing sooner in development life cycle, a so-called shift left strategy. So I'm curious what that means, we'll find out. So in this session we have um, uh, Swata, who will be uh, talking about how enterprises can uh, balance the long term and the short term without compromising quality. And Sweta is um, a product manager at IBM, a vast company, so I'm kind of curious which part of IBM, um, but actually um, from studied in the region at NUS in Singapore, a, a master's, and then went on to an MBA elsewhere, right? And, um, you describe yourself as a user-centric manager, passionate about solving problems through technology, 
with design thinking and data-driven analysis and obviously working in uh, different parts of the world. So currently you're in the US, yes. right? So different, different cultures everywhere, right? So, you know, so um, I, I'm just curious here, uh, from, a, from a novice point of view, because you've got different people at different stages, um, I kind of wonder why API testing is important. I mean, look, we know there's a development, a staging, and a production environment. But why, why, why is API testing important or different? Perhaps we could ask on that. Sure. So thank you, Jonathan, for the awesome introduction. Uh, you've done your research, so I need quite a bit. So <laughs> thanks for the introduction. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining this uh, session on you know, why API testing is important and what are the challenges we are facing um, in terms of um, making testing relevant in this agile world. So uh, Jonathan, that was a great question to kickstart this uh, session, right? Like why is API testing important? Now, like you mentioned, we are in a, a digital era where every enterprise, doesn't matter where, uh, what, what kind of an enterprise you are, Everybody wants to have a digital presence, and that's because, you know, the um, consumers or your customers are changing. They want everything digitally available to them. Your competitors are moving to become digital, right? So there is a lot of pressure in, in, in organizations to become um, digital, have a digital presence, and have digital channels to cater to your customers or your consumers. So uh, if, in, in this digital landscape, uh, what has um, become, or you know, the world of software development has undergone a metamorphosis. There is no, like waterfall model is no longer relevant. You know, if we want to quickly push out changes, if we want to quickly add features to our app, if we want to quickly uh, make changes to our applications. So that's where we you know agile development comes into play. And what agile development has, introduced all of us to is automating our development pipeline, which is what we call as DevOps, right? So almost all enterprises are embracing automation in, in their development and deployment in order to uh, you know, uh, increase or reduce the time to market in order to you know, win, serve, and retain customers. And that's become very crucial for organizations. Now, if you want to be uh, nimble, you're turning into, uh, you know, you're adopting CI/CD um, deployment. But often, what happens is the development phase uh, gets automated, but then the testing piece of it remains mostly manual. So, when you keep testing, uh, as uh, you know, when the testing remains manual, um, it's often time consuming, it particularly becomes a bottleneck, especially you know when your code base is growing at such a faster pace. So which is why it is extremely important to understand that testing shouldn't be a bottleneck if you want your organization to succeed in this uh, you know, agile DevOps world and be customer obsessed. Okay, so a strong believer I can see in, in automation, right? Actually, do you have any examples from, from your group how you've seen this automation at different levels? Because you talked about the, um, the, 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 the pipeline, development pipeline, and some of it being uh, maybe operationalized mm -hmm. and aligned and automated, and the test not being. Do you have any examples of that? Because I think people are at different levels of their Sure. Let's take an example. Agility. Oh an SCM, right? Like source code management, like GitHub. All of us, I'm pretty sure all of us here know, you know, the purpose of GitHub and how we are using GitHub, right? In our day-to-day -day development activities. So let's say I um, I develop an open API or let's say I'm developing an API definition. And then uh, as a developer, um, uh, I, the next thing that I would do is once I create or develop my definition, I'm going to um, add the behavior of it, uh, probably add um, right set of policies, security, 
you know, data transformation, like however I want the uh, model the API behavior. Now, once I do that, at a developer level, I would start with the unit testing, right? I want to make sure my API is working um, just fine. And uh, once I do the testing, uh, I would then, uh, let's say, um, like I would create the test cases to validate the API's behavior. Now, once that test uh, is has succeeded, the next step that I do is I check in and commit into the um, into my uh, SEM, the source code management system. And then uh, your pre-commit hook uh, on on the SEM is going to run um, your validation or linting to make sure that you know you're following your enterprise standards. And then let's say um, the the PR is approved, which is again is again that's going to be part of your uh, continuous um, like your uh, CI/CD pipeline, right? You uh, you then push the API into the next system, uh, next environment, which could be let's say a system or an integration environment. Again, when you move your API from the dev environment to let's say integration environment, you're going to increase your testing in terms of uh, you know what I'm testing my API. You're not just going to stop with a unit testing. Um, I might have this API interact with a couple of other APIs. So I want to do a complete end-to-end -end testing in that scenario to make sure um, you know um, all my use cases are validated. So for that, I need integration tests to make sure that the APIs that are interacting in this scenario are tested and you know, I'm getting the um, response that I want or I, I, I want to see. So again, uh, I want to, when I move this API from one environment to another environment, I would definitely need <coughs> um, uh, you know, a set of integration test cases to do this validation for me. And similarly, um, once the uh, validation is successful at this stage, uh, I create a successful PR where you know the CI/CD uh, pipeline gets triggered, and then it moves to the uh, next stage, which would be pre-prod, and then the automation continues, right? Like so, that's how we automate our uh, DevOps pipeline, where you know I move my code from one environment to another environment, but making sure that testing is accompanied as I um, you know move these um, move my code between these different environments. Okay. So, so you're saying you don't have to start, you have to start somewhere and, and it's a process from unit testing to integration testing and there's, there's gates at each step. Right. right. And so, often, oftentimes, uh, all of us, like, you know, I've also been a developer, we think that, you know, I ping the API and I get a response and I check for a response code and I'm happy with that. Right. So that's not the testing that we are looking at. All I'm checking in this case is I'm just doing a simple uh, ping, which is definitely not sufficient in this API ecosystem where we are interacting with so many APIs. Um, you know where we are providing multi-user experience in terms of you know um, mobile apps, IoT apps, or even the uh, autonomous vehicles, right? So everything is getting interconnected, and all of this is being powered by APIs from behind the scenes. So it's become extremely crucial for us to understand why we need different levels of testing at different uh, stages of your development to make sure that your API is still valid, it's reliable, and it's consumable. Is this a one-off testing? Actually, I should say we've had uh, a, a few people join the room, so thanks for joining. And uh, we're just talking about the basics of why API testing is important. Mm -hmm. And Sweta, product manager at IBM, is giving some examples of, of a testing pipeline. Yeah. So you've talked about how crucial this is, um, and we've gone into some detail. So I think I'd, I'd just move on to the next topic. If anyone's got any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. Um, I'm not sure we, we, you can come in and speak on this, but you could also try that as well, because it is a round table. So you're really welcome to, to, to interrupt and clarify on anything. Um, so you, you talked about why is it important, and I think you've stressed on the, um, on the cruciality of of doing thorough testing, both unit integration and, and so forth. Um, so I just wanted the the, um, the actual interface, the challenges of getting it in with the dev process. 
all right? So yeah. CICD that sounds very nice, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm pretty sure there might be some challenges out there, especially if people are evolving into it. Yeah. Yes. I was just getting to that and uh, you were spot on. Oh, okay. so the second challenge okay. is, you know, getting the testing team, the QA team uh, up for this challenge, right? Like um, oftentimes uh, what I've seen is um, when, when the testing team has to write test cases, like code the test cases from scratch, it is a time consuming process because they need to understand, uh, you know, what the API, the code, like, you know what the API code is actually doing, and they should figure out. So, what are the scenarios I should be testing for? And let's say the developer is making code changes like every day. That's I'm I'm actually downgrading it. Probably like they make hundreds of changes every day, right? So when the changes are happening at such a faster rate and at such high volume, uh, the QA team actually uh you know find it hard to catch on to that changes then they have to manually you know make changes to their test scripts so how, so what they do is essentially they start playing catch up to the changes that the dev team makes and probably they're going to lose track of all the code changes or most of the code changes that's been done so the test script that they're going to use probably is not complete it's not comprehensive and the testing that's getting done based on that script is not complete. So, um, and we also see that in, in smaller organizations, testing team is not, um, you know, it's not a permanent team. So they are formed based on like, you know, during, uh, you know, when I have to do extensive testing, when I'm releasing a product, when I'm releasing a feature, because of a lot of constraints, like manpower constraints, budget constraints and whatnot. So if I have to, um, onboard a testing team at a such a, a such a short period of time how am i going to do that and still make sure that you know my testing is not affected my apis are still uh, extensively tested to make sure that you know everything is good good to go like when i'm launching an api or when i'm launching an app let's say i don't want to launch a faulty app where users are trying to do something and uh, you know the data that or the app that's um, you know, the response that I'm getting from the app is not what I totally intended it for. So uh, that's why automating the testing, um, as you automate your dev uh, the development pipeline is very important, given that, you know, um, you know, the testing team needs um, support from the testing tool to play catch up or, you know, stay ahead or stay in line with your development changes in terms of code. Yeah, so it's, it's like, a, like you're saying, the code base, the developers are very busy doing what developers do, producing code base, but the quality people, the QA, cannot keep up. Exactly. And the testers maybe can only take the lead from the QA people, right? Mm -hmm. So they could become bottlenecks there. Yeah. And how, have you, how have you seen it work uh, in real life? Sorry? How have you seen it work or not in real life? What kind of real life, uh, I wouldn't say disasters, real, real life um, applications and evolution of this? So um, real life application is like, when, when we see, talk to customers, right? Or even, um, you know, when in, in the past, like based on the experience that I've been, uh, yeah. uh, it's keeping the testing manual was, uh, is a hard part because that could push your um, GA dates, like your um, release dates. Because if I haven't done um, enough testing to make sure that you know the code is working fine, I don't want to release a faulty product in the market that's going to tarnish my my company's or my enterprise's um, brand name, value, whatnot, right? So this is like a serious. Um, I'm very passionate about API testing, so I do think it's a very serious problem that needs to be addressed in order to make the developer's life um, and the QA, QA, like the quality assurance champions' life, um, a lot bearable in this DevOps pipeline. Even though, you know, DevOps has introduced uh, agility, fastness, nimbleness, um, for the developers particularly, it has, um, you know, uh, made a QA team lag behind you know the, this uh, speed of uh, development and 
Uh, that's why, uh, you know, this is a very big problem that we understood uh, in IBM uh, and the product that I'm working on, which is called the IBM API Connect, which is an API management solution. And we have come up with a solution where you would be able to automatically to create test cases based on your API definition, on your based on your API semantics. So think about this. I don't have to sit and code my test script. A tool is automatically generating it for me based on uh, you know, the definition of the API, which is a great thing. I'm seeing like lots and lots of time for my QA team where the team has to just make small changes to the already generated test cases in this case in order to you know, keep up with what the uh, developers are doing. So uh, this is why we feel um, organizations to, uh, organizations must understand why API testing is important and look at the benefits of you know, creating test cases automatically uh, based on the um, API definition, because that's going to be validating my API's behavior rather than just doing a simple um, response code check. OK, starting to see how it all fits okay. together now. And it's, it's kind of a, it's like a collaboration tool. Is that an oversimplification? Exactly. So let's say the developer has created a test case, right? Like he has generated a unit test case to test an API. The QA team can take the same test case and add on, um, you, know, uh, you know, probably add more checks, more assertions to expand the testing. And this is going to dramatically and drastically reduce the time the QA team is going to spend on uh, creating the test case if they had to do it manually. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, some uh, some questions came in before the okay. event, um, which I, I ties ties to this okay. if I could. I think we've got like we got like ten minutes. The, these roundtables are really short. Um, so um, so anyone who's got any questions and clarifications, please use this time. And the chat will stay open afterwards for a short time as well if anything comes to mind. Um, so. The question was best practices. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if there are best practices in Agile because it keeps on changing. But best practices for improving developer experience for your API stack. So you spoke to the topic of de developer mm -hmm. experiences. But this is specifically best practices. Uh, so the, um, the best practices, uh, so I, I would like to highlight, I'm not sure if people uh, in this roundtable have attended Alan's session previously. Where he was talking about it just just happened. Uh, oh, great! So he he's talked about a white paper that he has written uh, very recently, describing you know what are the best practices for different personas, and that includes developer experience as well. So he's extensively mm -hmm. uh, spoken about um, how we want to make this developer experience easier, like the best practices, right from enabling uh, developers to rapidly create iterate because developers want to iterate rapidly. I don't want to have a process that's going to make them spend a lot of time to, you know, to make a just, just a small change, right? And if I'm making a change, I should be able to easily debug the code because, again, a key aspect of uh, development is to easily troubleshoot and debug your code because, you know, no code is perfect the first time I'm going to write the code. So I need a mechanism to easily troubleshoot the code where I don't have to spend a lot of time to figure out, you know, what is the mistake I did. The tool or the platform has to tell me in terms of, hey, this is the issue. Why don't you try this out? So an easy debug experience followed by, again, it all ties up, right? Like once I develop the code, I debug it, and I have to test it. So that's where uh, when, when a tool provides, uh, you know, a way to, you know, do all of this, which you know, broadly encompasses a developer's role in any organizations, it's going to make his or her work a lot, lot easier. And, you know, it gives them the independence and, um, uh, and, and the productivity increases because he or she gets to do what they, you know, like to do the best, which is like developing code. Yeah, and, 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 and to the point of agile, agile development, right? Mm -hmm the development pipeline, but also the agile release train and the sense of having flow through right. it, right? Things can only go forward and wouldn't want any bottlenecks. Right. There's actually there's actually a question come in here. Uh, can you see the chat? Oh, yeah, uh, from Angora. From Angora. Okay. 
and Guru. How important is the testing scenario against the product itself? So uh, API testing is, so when, uh, I'm not sure if I understand the context that Anguru is coming from, but I'm still gonna take a stab at it. Um, please post. Yeah, sure, we can always interact on the chat as well if, if it's not answered the question. Yeah. So when, when you mean product, is it like the UI piece and the backing piece? Uh, and um, I do see that, you know, when we talk about product testing, most likely people are referring to the UI side of things, right? Like if I'm testing the just the UI, let's say if I have a mobile app, right? I, I have a UI and then I have the UI uh, making a call to the backend, which could be my API. So um, when, when we say, lo a lot of times when we say product testing, uh, we just say that, you know, uh, it's it, it's mostly related to the uh, UI testing. But when I say my UI tests are running fine, it doesn't mean that my APIs are, uh, you know, uh, being tested. It's it's not the case, right? Because um, all you're seeing is my API is getting triggered and I'm getting a response, which is again, like a simple code check. Uh, but that's, that's not what, uh, that is important, but that's not the only thing that is important. You should also make sure that your backend is responding with, let's say, the data or the information that you want, uh, you know, that you want the backend to be returned. Now, in for this interaction to happen, for fetching the data that's being requested on the UI and returning the right data on the UI, you know, there are multiple ways that you know this can go wrong. Uh, it could be a functional failure or, you know, you're fetching the wrong data or, you know, you, you're clearly missing something in terms of uh, how the data is formatted and whatnot. So that's where API testing or, you know, testing your backend comes into play versus doing just the UI testing just to see if your API is getting called or just getting the data returned is not uh, a complete um, complete testing, I would say. Yeah, so talking, yes, completeness seems to summarize it. So it has to be a, a mix of both. Concentrating on just the UI testing and forgetting about the backing testing is not an ideal approach to testing your complete product. Yeah, thanks. I think we've got like five minutes. Well, we're actually meant to finish now. Okay. Let's go on for five minutes <laughs> because there's another part of the question. So Angora, I hope that answers uh, the first part of the question. The second part is testing scenarios and uh, something about abuse, which also ties to some questions that came in around security, which is um, uh, tools that come in to attack API modules, how do you prevent the attack? And another security question, which was how to secure APIs. Um, it doesn't say much else, make a secure API. Okay. So this is about security testing. So there. security is a very big topic by itself. And it's going to be hard for me to talk about it in the last five minutes that we have here. So um, I do want to quickly call out uh, another white paper that we have put out uh, where we have extensively talked about, explained about the different API security principles that an organization should be looking at if, you, if they want to secure their APIs. Um, I'd be happy to share the link in the chat if, uh, if that's something of interest. Um, so that's one thing. And like the testing scenario falling into the wrong hands, right? So that's why we have, we should have roles and permissions like granular um, roles and permissions baked into the product where, you know, that's what we call as the role-based access control. And having that would help um, organizations to limit, you know, who's getting access to the test cases, who's getting access to this test data, who can actually run the test cases or who can actually create the test cases. So having those role-based access control in place would help in uh, making sure that, you know, you provide the right people with the right access. Great. So in the interest of time, uh, before wrapping it okay. up, <laughs> excuse me, one more question came sure. in uh, related to um, you know, how often should we do API testing? Again, quite a broad, a broad thing. One assumes that once you release a product, it's released and then everything else is... A, is a change to if it. You yeah. How often do you have to do it? Every time you make a change to your code, you need to test your APIs because even a small code change 
can trigger or can have a rippling effect on your app, right? So uh, there's no frequency or recommended frequency, uh, but it's up to how you know you uh, model your agile process. So every two weeks, I'm gonna have uh, like you know developers checking in code, which means my as soon as they check in, or even as part of the pipeline as they are checking in, I'm running the tests. Uh, so when they check in, the CI/CD pipeline will trigger the tests that are generated, and the, these tests would validate the uh, code that I checked in. And then only if all my test cases passes, my code gets um, you know sent to the next environment. So. Um, yeah, I guess this, this one is about, thanks for that. I, I, I don't know Ika, if that answers it, but I'm seeing here that we have an API marketplace. So what I assume that means is once the, the, the code is released, mm -hmm. what, what changes, how changes are fed back from, because anyone could be using it, right? right. And how, how changes are fed back into the system. Yeah. Um, are they talking? Is that how you understand that question about marketplace? And Oh yeah, I think you're right. That's what, um, uh... OK, um, so again, the consumers would be looking at your API spec. The, I'm, I'm assuming it's about the contract testing that's being asked here. Because if you have an API marketplace and you're making changes to your API, how are the consumers going to know? So that's um, something that the API provider would have to um, um, communicate to your uh, downstream consumers on, you know, if you're making a change to your uh, data structure or if you're making a change to your endpoint, actually, um, which is, again, um, um, the consumers will have to, again, test the changes or the changes that you make to your API with their applications, right? And that's where there are different best practices when it comes to putting out different versions of the API. So you give the consumers um, you know, um, intimation and time for them to actually migrate their apps from version one to the new version. So uh, again, it ties in with the best practices of how you're going to version your API, uh, as well as how you're going to communicate those changes to your uh, consumers. Okay, great. Thanks for answering that. Look, I, I recognize we're at the end of this session. In fact, a little bit over overrun. So we'll keep the chat open. Thanks for, uh, for addressing many of the questions, actually. We went through about three, four, you know, about a half a dozen questions here, which people sent in. How can people contact you? How would you like to interact with anyone who came here or share share the word about API testing, given it's your, your passion? Um, How best? They can reach me out on LinkedIn. Um, uh, it's my first name and last name. Uh, so I would be happy to connect with anybody who's interested to talk more about API testing on LinkedIn. And yes. um, okay. the product that I was mentioning about is called IBM API Connect Test and Monitor. There is also a free cloud version available for people to try it out if they want to see how to how they can generate test cases manually, sorry, automatically, and uh, you know integrate tests as part of their CI/CD pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so what we'll do is thanks everyone for attending and for the questions and so forth. We, we close the session here so people can get on with the schedule. Uh, uh, the chat will be open, so we'll be here for the next five minutes if there's any further questions. So with that, thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.